set out on a happy place, another Saturday class. So we are into summer now, so we're using more summer themes. And again, I'm inviting you to work with nature, but this time with paint and um, pattern, a little bit pattern, but mainly paints. So we're working on a project where you will create a piece of artwork um, based on shapes from leaves and you work in layers and again we're trying to be more creative so we're not using brushes we're using um, kitchen sponges for example and this way we can create different te uh, te textured uh, backgrounds and uh, patterns for actual leaves so have a go I'm looking forward to see what you create and if you can um, and it's nice weather this weekend you can this is great activity that you can do in a garden and um, allow the artwork to dry in between. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. It's going to dry quickly because that's what we're looking um, to use in this project, the drying process and applying another layer. So I have a go. I'm looking forward to see what you create. Bye-bye. Okay, so let's get started by talking about materials in the process. So this is... Um, two stages process which is great if you want to work in the garden have a time and it's and to allow the artwork to dry first so material wise i'm going to use for painting today um stuff from the kitchen basically washing up stuff so i have a sponge i have this um um scrunchy um metal kind of you know uh, bits that are now this integrating a bit um, and you can cut them into different sizes smaller sizes because that may be what you need and with this one i have the um, soft and rough size side so i'll be using both and for that i think i just need a tiny bit so that's going to be replacing my um, the brushes for this um, activity and i'll be working with some leaves from the garden uh, for my initial pattern so the plan is with acrylic paints um, and working on you can work on cardboard you can work on paper i'm going to um, first of all create the background but only in areas where i want my leaves to be visible and i will allow that to dry and my second layer um, I'm going to come back with the paint, but then put the leaves on top of um, my dry paint, so I get like a masking effect. Okay, some of them I want white, so that's where I don't want paint to go. So I'm going to start with arranging the pattern here first, so I know where the colors go because I don't want to really paint too much into areas where I'm not having my leaves. Um, and I will keep some um, on a paper to get the white ones. So let me start arranging, arranging it. So I think this get different shapes. So this is just for me to know where to put the paint, basically. Okay, so this one here and this one I will keep. I just remove that so I kind of know where it goes. I'm going to apply my first layer of paint with the sponge and the scrunchie and keep those ones so I have the white background and then I'm going to allow this um, to dry. So I have acrylic paint. I'm not pre-mixing too much. If you want, you can work straight away with green. I'm just going to grab some blue and yellow and mix it here. So I already have green. So start with those ones because I need to keep them on the surface. Okay. Just going to grab some whites, some lighter. Green. OK, 
okay so those ones would be my white and then I'm just gonna I remember my leaves were here and here and I'm going to apply a variety of greens some is going to be very well mixed some just one um, some just like barely blue and um, yellow so it gives me a variety of effects and let me just now use that side to see if it's mm, creating different effects. This is good for circle. And now we're going to move to scrunchy. try to move them in different ways you see it creates different effect you can be dabbing it could be just barely touching the surface I'm going to go back to my soft sponge now I will also have some water here so I'm just dabbing it with in water so I get more paint but it becomes more watery now okay this is my first layer I'm going to allow this fully dry and then we'll place the rest of my leaves Use them as a mask and apply the top layer in a different colors. So what you need to remember, this is the color for your leaves. Okay. Okay, this is fully dry now. I removed those leaves, so they're like my initial layer. And I'm repeating the process now. The only thing that is different is because there's a background already, this will be the color of my leaves. And on top of that, I will um, apply much darker top layer. You can reuse those ones you, you had in first place. Okay, so now I'm going to use my remaining sponge. It's a bit wet and I have um, purple the white that was left over and blue which was left over and I want that to be my top layer those three colors so they will fully cover everything now and then the leaves will preserve the color underneath I'm just maybe I'm gonna rearrange I just decided Actually, yeah. bit messy Oops. and sometimes you know I'm not I don't want to have like full full coverage that's why I want the sponge because sometimes I get the the underneath layer to be seen through and and that is great okay so this is going to be tricky because of course I still have can see that how it's gonna work I don't want to reveal it yet I'm just gonna help myself and reposition this one here so when I go around I don't have to worry about the edges too much
you may sometimes need to clean your fingers because it gets a bit sticky. So this is very much like a um, concept of a little bit printmaking. This I'm just touching a bit because I don't want a very dark layer here. It's not wet my fingers, it's easy to hold the leaves. I mean, you could also, you know, use different sponges types of things you want. This one doesn't like to stay here. water on my sponge, more paint. Just work on this edge here. And I'm going to leave that to dry. And then I'm taking my leaves off and I'm revealing what the pattern looks like. So let me do that and come back to you. Okay, this is dry now. So, you know, how cool is that? You can see so many different patterns here because of use of different things for the initial layer. Now, this could be left like that if you like it. Um, and I would um, encourage you to play with different sizes of the leaves because that gives you more interesting effects variety. But you can also use on top of that, when it's fully dry, um, biro pen or pencil or colored pencil, and you can just work on the veins and patterns of the leaves um, if this is something you would like to do. Um, colored pencil is also good for that. So let me just grab a colored pencil. So that's that's a pen. So for pen, for example, it's quite good on um, top of the paint. So let's have a look. That's that, like I said, this is optional. Or maybe you want to go again or about few leaves, giving them a bit more shape and veins. Or you can use colored pe pencil or marker. You can just go around the edges. Or you can play around with again shapes of veins of the leaf. Also, if you used um, dark greens, you can work with white pen on top of that. And you can play with the outlines as well emphasizing the outlines it's so actually each leaf could you know have different technique um, used this uh, colored pencil is not so well visible I hope you can see on the camera you know try different shades of um, greens if you if you went for green hmm. 
can trace some of them you know you may decide to leave completely blank another option is to use the the initial ones the white ones for pattern or you know doodling Maybe give them a sections as well, different patterns. Okay, so this is over to you. Many possibilities. Have a go and let me see how it worked for you. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.